Ne last item there, use consequences wisely. Consequences can be positive, like giving people more money, giving people raises. One consequence that we have in my company is we, uh, we have an annual meeting uh, where we get all our employees together, because I've got employees all over the country. And in a good year, I let the employees pick where the meeting is. And we've had meetings in the Virgin Islands or at ski resorts or whatever. And in a year that's just kind of OK, I usually pick where it is, which means it's going to be in Orlando, because uh, I like Orlando. Um, and then in a really bad year, I'm going to pick where it is. And I always threaten my people that it's going to be in Tulsa in February. And no, no insult to people who are from Tulsa. But the whole point there is that that's a consequence we can have. And it's based on how we do on our execution, on our strategy. So when I say use consequences wisely, if you reward something like that growth thing that the guy was going for, doubling the size of the company, don't be surprised if people make choices that reduce your profitability. And if you, if you reward profitability, don't be surprised if people make choices that maybe reduce your growth. So you have to be, you have to be smart and think through what are people going to do. Because everybody who works for you is playing a game. And that game is, how do I make the most money in my job? Perfectly reasonable game. You got to use that to your advantage. Um, finally, dealing with resources. I think you need to understand your pipeline. Your pipeline is how many, how many things can you push through? How much time and money can you spend on stuff? Most people spend a lot of time budgeting stuff, and they do a very good job planning how they're going to spend money on stuff. Most of the people in this room are going to find, I'd say probably 90 plus percent of the people in this room are going to find the thing that stops you from achieving your goals is not the money. If you need more money to get your business goals done, there are a number of people in this room who will arrange for you to get that money at very reasonable rates, okay? And they told you during their introductions that they would do that, okay? So if you need more money, you can get more money. But when you personally run out of time, guess what? You're all done, you don't have any more. Your time is the most finite resource you have in your business. So be aware that you've got a pipeline and it is, you know, typically most people will spend 50 hours a week 50 weeks a year working in American business. The average is about 57 hours a week, actually. That means you've got about 2,500 hours a year that you can spend on these kind of activities, plus running your business. So if you can't carve out a little bit of time to achieve your goals every month, your pipeline is going to be narrowed down substantially. Also, make sure you compare the resources you use to the uses they have. And what I mean by that is we don't want to spend a lot of time and money on something that's going to have a very low payoff. We want to spend up most time and money on things that are going to have a very high payoff. And that's why we want to have those measurable goals, because we want to measure so we can say, this is worth spending 500 hours and $100,000 on, for example. Also, finally, you want to schedule your commitments. The idea of having that time thing for the goal, having deadlines, very, very important. When you're dealing with resources, and actually, I like to actually schedule people's time and what they're going to get done when, uh, because I think that makes a huge difference. Now, uh, let me just give you an example of, of how this all pulls together. The interesting experience I just had in January. I had a client, a construction firm uh, in New England. Uh, the owner called me up in December and he said, well, Robert, we sat down, we did our planning in November, which we did do. And he said, you remember how we planned we were going to have $45 million in business next year? I said, yeah, I remember. He said, well, we, we, we got it all laid out. We got the contracts. It looked like we were all set for the year. And the last week of December, we had $38 million in contracts that got canceled. So we can't do our next meeting in January. Now, my, react, my first reaction to this was, OK, boy, there goes the revenue for me. Of course, I was thinking kind of selfishly. My second thought was, you know, I've already bought the plane tickets. So they're going to have to pay for that. And so what I said to the guys, you know, I've been working with these guys for a while. I said, I'm going to come out and have this meeting anyway, because I want to make sure you guys get all the benefit from the other meetings we've had. And I view my relationship with my clients as a commitment, not just you know how much money can you give me. So the guy said, wow, that's cool. That's very generous. We, we went in and we did that meeting. And the first thing I said at that meeting is, what is the objective of this meeting? And what do you think they said? What would you say the objective of this meeting was? Get my 38 million back. They, that's what they said. They said, we need to get enough contracts going so that we don't have to lay off a lot of people in our business, which is actually a fairly ambitious thing in the construction industry right now. So we sat down and said, well, what would it take to do that? And we started looking around and we said, well, where's the money? Where's the money being spent? We identified a number of industrial sectors where people were spending money on construction. Uh, government and healthcare, for example, were very big in that area. And then we said, well, here are the contracts that are going on. Why aren't we going to get these? Why aren't we getting these? And we identified a number of reasons. And some of them were strategic. I'll tell you right now, some of them I said, that's not a direction that we should be going as a company. But if what it means is that coming out of the recession, we're going to be in better shape because we won't have gotten rid of a lot of our people, I'm cool with that. So we sat down, we looked at this, we identified where we could get that, 
and we said, what do we have to do to do this? And what are the consequences if we do it? What are the consequences if we don't do it? We laid the consequences out, which is one of the things I talked about here very well. And then we did the, the other stuff I talked about here. We looked at our resources. We created deadlines. We said, here are the people who have to do it. Here's what's going to happen if you do do it. Here's what's going to happen if you don't do it. And we set up a monitoring schedule that was very tight because we actually had to do a lot of stuff in the next two months in order to hit this target. Okay. Uh, about two weeks ago, I talked to the owner of the company. They picked up $38 million in contracts based on what we did. Okay. And the reason they did it, he said, was not just because, you know, he could have gone out and said, oh, the sky's falling, go out and get more contracts. He said it was because we sat down and analyzed exactly where it was going to come from, who was going to do it, how they were going to do it, what the deadlines were, and what the consequences were. Now, he said the interesting thing is he felt a little uncomfortable because he's actually paying out over a million dollars in employee bonuses based on doing that. But let me ask you a question. If you were running this business and you normally would get about $1.5 million in profitability and you'd normally be firing or laying off a whole bunch of your employees if you hadn't gotten that $38 million, how would you feel about spending that million dollars? For this guy, he'd never spent that much in his life on employee bonuses, but he was very happy to have done so. So I, I hope I've given you some tools, some ways to think about this. Um, I do want you to think about here are typical results of people who use those tips I've just given you. First of all, they'll typically set five date objectives. The average is about 85% completion on those five date objectives. So it's not 100%. It, yes, this is based on people who got 100%, but what I find is the tools can only get you so far. And there's usually, there are usually one or two objectives that, that somehow are just resistant to that. 14% um, average profit growth, as long as you're aware that profitability is something you want to be looking for. Uh, the average, and I just thought you guys would find this interesting, the average in 2008, 2009 was about 5% profit growth, which doesn't sound quite as good, but it's, it's way, way, way more than average if you look at the industries that we're talking about. So you can see this stuff works, and I think the story probably illustrates uh, you know, the kind of impact you can get from this. Please try this stuff in your business. I think that this year in particular, it's very easy for people whining about the economy to say, oh, you know, we don't have to achieve our goals this year. And the reality is, you can do just like this construction firm. You can go out and achieve your goals any way you want, as long as everybody's on board and pulling together and understands what's necessary to achieve your goals and what the consequences are. That being said, uh, there, it, for more information, robertbradford.com. You can go to it. It's in red, so it's kind of hard to see. I didn't test that. Um, my phone number right here, 665-2971. Uh, you can also go to my company website, cssp.com. We've got a lot of tools there. I've got a great book on strategic planning. And on April 23rd and 24th, we're doing a seminar that uh, Elizabeth talked about. Uh, love, to, uh, love to see you. We're also doing one in the Detroit area, I think, in May, but I'm not teaching it. Uh, but it's a really good one anyway because the person who's teaching it is really sharp. Uh, otherwise, thank you guys very much. I hope you uh, use all the stuff I taught you.